Hey there, it's Sandy. The second half of this video is going to be coloring a scene with dyes. The first half is full of glitter because I was inspired by this release from Ellen Hudson that came out today to use too much glitter and you're going to see way too much and I know it'll freak people out who know me. So there you go. Halloween magic does not have glitter on it. This one I filmed and put over on Ellen Hudson's channel showing how to use this owl and make this tree both on black and white cardstock. Halloween magic also has an eyeball and spiders and things and I made some airbrush cards with that. The next couple of items I have not used yet because they're too many things. Nice of you is a stamp set I'm going to be using a lot though because it's all about thanking people. Very, very great stamp set and I send a lot of thank you cards so that's going to be great. 12 days of Christmas you can make ornaments that celebrate the whole 12 days of Christmas. You can make all different kinds of wonderful projects with that. I have not had a chance to yet. And the kit, there's a whole kit that has felt involved and, and the stamp set that is, is making its return appearance. And I decided to stamp them all into one big tree, put them in order and color it up. It's a huge card to try to fit all of them. So yeah, I'll be mailing that one in a box with a gift, I think, instead of trying to figure out how to find an envelope for it. There's plushies, a ginger boy and ginger girl, and you can use the skeleton stuff that I showed just a few minutes ago with ginger boy and ginger girl to make skeleton plushies. But I made her a dress. I did that by cutting her out of both the brown and the red, and then I cut extra pieces of the scallops to put on her, her little arms, and then I cut her out of her, her toes, at least, out of black so I could give her boots. Tag Trio dies. I paired with Warm Wishes. There's three tags. And I love these stamps in this one. The, the sentiments are beautiful. And that background is made out of those three strips of stamps. And then I stamped the package, put glossy accents and glitter on it. And this one, I just colored a, a Copic background, added a bunch of glossy accents and all the glitter. The bottom strip was done with a piece of double stick tape. Put glitter on top of that. All of these, by the way, are going to have a description over on the blog with individual pictures and how I did them, because I know this is flying by fast. Knockout Forest is a little group of trees. I knocked them out, popped up the panel, and then all the pieces that came out of it, I glued back in and added glitter onto them. The sentiment, I added glitter onto, and these are for people who don't celebrate your holiday. If you want to send something to somebody that celebrates their holiday, I used glossy accents and glitter to make my own kind of embossing powder because I don't have any. So I only have one pot of glitter. Merry Little Christmas has cabin, little town scene, a little city scene, and of course comes with dyes. But I made a couple cards using my backgrounds from my new classes that show you how to make night skies. And added a little bit of glitter onto them so I could kind of feature whatever element of the scene that I wanted to with the glitter. My whole studio is going to need complete vacuuming out when this is all finished because glitter is all over. The shaker globe, I didn't actually make shakers out of them. So I just made little tags out of them because I thought it was going to be kind of fun to do that. And you'll see some of the pieces that some of these are made from later in this video. This one was from the Merry, Christ Merry Little Christmas set. There's a little snowman in it and I just put him in there and colored it. Didn't do anything else to it other than add glitter. Peace and Love is a cute little one that comes in the Made For You stamp set. So this one has more graphical images if that's your thing. The tree and the snowflake are the ones that I used in the previous little snow globe. Now, this one is for the all inside bear who I love. And now he's got more little stuff to go with him for fall and winter. And I did this one just using the dies because the dies are shaped like what they are. The sleigh looks like a sleigh. The packages look like packages. And I could just color them in, which was kind of fun. I also used the stamps to put the bear in the sleigh and give him some snow with 
glossy accents and glitter in the background, of course, and use one of my new class backgrounds on that one as well as this one. And this guy has the little Santa beard. I drew my own Santa outfit, so you'll have to do your own as well if you want to put the suit on. Then we have deer antlers, and this one was the one that started me on the glitter, actually. There's a stamp set called Sparkly Christmas, and I started using sparkle, and then I thought, what, what would happen if I tried to put glitter on everything? So this one I thought would be cute on a gift of giving somebody a little pot of glitter. Just put that up on top. Twirling flurries. This one's a cover plate with little swirling snowflakes coming down. And I've used a deer that's coming up. You'll see that in a minute with, of course, too much glitter. <laughs> I know this is probably hurting your head, all this glitter. Used a little snow globe on that one as well with the background. Now on to the deer. This was one of my very favorites in the release, the, the little deer, because I could color them. And I'm going to show you how to do that. This one has the entire herd of deer on it. And then the birch tree cover plate has, you know, the leaves you can make scenes with it with leaves in the top but I'm going to use them very plainly and I've of course added glitter onto it a tone on tone look for both of these with just little glitter accents one has the sleigh in it one has the deer in it but this is the card that we're going to make today and the way that I did this was to make this cover plate background into something a little bit more like a regular scene instead of having a frame around it because I wasn't going to use it for a shaker or anything and this way I could color the pieces and not have to draw the trees so if you don't like to draw trees or you don't know how to draw trees this is a really great way to do that so I'm just going to snip all these pieces off so that the branches continue and go straight out to the edge and you could do this with a lot of different cover plates that you may own this same technique could work with those as well and I've grabbed a couple of markers, and this picture will be over on the blog. If you need to know what they are, I'm not going to put them on the screen because this video took me forever to do anyway, so I'll let you determine those. But for the trees, very simple to do. I'm just going to do some scribbling with a medium brown, and I've just picked left side, so I have some lighting coming from the right side, sort of-ish. And I'm just kind of randomly scribbling little horizontal lines here and there, little broken lines. It's not supposed to look like it's outlined. It's supposed to look like bark to make them look like birch trees. And then I added in a little bit of a warm gray color and leaving lots of white coming in as well. Don't, don't make it just solid all the way down. I'm, I'm again, just scribbling, but this time more with a side of the marker. So I get a thicker line instead of just the tip of it, like I did with the brown. And then after that, you can go in with, you know, another color to accent it and to give it a little bit more detail. I chose to do that with a darker gray. And I'm just making thinner lines on top of all this and making them more scribbly on top. And if you go to the blog and you see the card, you can look at it closer and see what those scribbles really look like. There's some spots where it's going to be a little dark spot, like a a little hole in the tree, that sort of thing. But the rest of it, just let it be loose and scribbly. And I promise you, it'll look really great on your card once you get it done. But it's super easy to do. Now, I was going to color the deer, and I went to look up white-tailed deer, and I found this on the web. It was so much fun. I sat here and played with it forever. There's going to be a link to it on the blog if you want to go play with it yourself. But you can look at where the whites are on a deer, isn't that cool? So you can see that where the white starts on his belly. And if you're looking at him from a particular angle, do you want the legs to be white or is that leg going to look like it's brown? And yeah, I, I probably made this little guy dizzy. That was probably not nice of me, but it was too much fun. So what I've done is die cut them, but I've left the dies in the background of the paper so that they'd hold still. And I'm going to put down the base color of... The, the brown that I'm choosing to use. And if you want to make your deer purple deer and do all kinds of crazy things with them, you can use the same techniques. Just use the other colors that you want to use. So here I'm going to make the front legs have the dark color on them or the, the medium color, should I say. And the back leg will be white because that's what I saw when I spun the little deer around. It was really helpful to be able to look at them from that angle and see, okay, 
when their ears are facing me, what color is the inside of their ears? And what does it look like when you look at the ear on the other side? So I hope there are more of those little animated GIFs. I would really like to be able to look at them when I color animals because that would be super helpful. So I'm going to put a little bit, bit of dark color on the tops of each of the animals. And I know it's counterintuitive because we normally think shadows are on the bottom, but this is the actual color of the fur as opposed to the shadows. And then I'll do some blending of the colors in between so I get a, a mid-tone in there. I guess I started with a mid-tone, so maybe this is a mid to dark tone. And then going back in with my lighter color. And I made these in darker colors than I might otherwise because it's a night scene and I wanted them to feel fairly dark on the, the finished card. What I did at the end, I was using this light brown for the antlers and I decided to knock back the white on all of this. Instead of having all of that be white, it would just be this really light brown, which worked super well because it gave me contrast to the snow and it gave me contrast for the little white spots on the female deer. So that was kind of a and a surprise that I pulled on myself and it actually worked because then I could go back in where there is really white on his belly and on his chin and that sort of thing. And I could add in extra white details because I had added that tan color first. So the white really stands out as much more white. And then when you see them on the snow, it's going to make a big difference because you're going to have some color in those legs. So that was how I colored all the deer on all of my cards. I kind of got a little obsessed and went a little crazy on them. But aren't they cute? They are so adorable. All right. Now, the background I'm going to do in Copic marker. But here, you could do anything you want. You could use a piece of pattern paper. You could do some distressing stuff. You can watercolor something. Whatever you want to do to create your own night sky for a card like this. Because... You're just going to glue these other pieces on. This can be a sky of any kind that you want to use at all. And I'm going to use a blue, and I'm going to mix it with a blue-green. Now, my marker is drying out here a little, so I was struggling. But I tried to at least break up the edge of where the blue meets the blue-green. And then I went back in with a marker that was much juicier and went over all of it. And so fortunately, I was able to salvage this piece of paper. So what I do find is when you try to do a flood of color, you are going to get some sort of a mess. It's just the way it is with Copic marker, especially if your markers aren't juicy. But if you keep working on it, you can usually eventually get it to blend. If you're really desperate, then you might even try taking, like once you, once you get it about close, spritz it with some... Uh, in, a, in a mini mister, put a little bit of colorless blender in there. And sometimes that'll add a nice texture to it. But you see how many times I went over this back and forth. And it almost looks like there's a forest in the background. That area where they didn't blend. So I'm also going to add snow and decided I wasn't going to worry about whether or not it was perfect blending. Because no one's going to care. No one's going to see that except you and me. You know how trashy my background looked. And yeah, we can fix that. So I colored a bunch of deer, of course, so that my little deer could be more of a, a whole herd and be a family. I glued down two of them. You can see how I intertwined them with the trees themselves. They're standing in the trees. Added a bunch of snow in here, making some snowflakes bigger and some snowflakes smaller. Just kind of alternating that as I was going around the card. And... Then I could just start adding on more of my deer. And you could probably do the snow after you finish adding in all the deer. But for me, I found it really easy to use my glossy accents to add my deer in there. You can use other glues, but my glues are all gummed up. <laughs> I, I apparently can't seem to keep a glue bottle working. But I can seem to get my glossy accents to not clog up. So that's what I use. So I've got two of the male deer and a bunch of the females for my scene. Just gluing them down carefully. If you end up getting any glossy accents on your paper, just wipe that off with a baby wipe real quickly while it's wet. Or scrape it off very gently with, I, I sometimes will use a knife to sort of lift that up so I don't end up getting the shiny on there. 
But you could also do what I did and add some glitter to it. So I've added glitter along the line where the deer are standing, along the hillside, and then along some of the trees. So I have some sparkle on here as well. So that is my card for you today. You can see all of them individually with more text explanations of how I did them because I know this flew by fast. I don't like to take up much of your time. So you can go over to my blog, check that out, see what everybody else is making with the new release. And there's one stamp set I have not gotten yet. So stay tuned. That's going to be another video at some point in the near future. I hope to have that on the blog, at least a card made with it before you get there. So we'll see how that goes. We'll see how my plan goes to get that done. Alrighty, I will see you guys later. Take care. Bye-bye.